Okay, that looks ready. That looks about right. Yeah, the lights are on. Everything is fine. Great. I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> Great. <laughs> then let's get to the punch. A survey was conducted which sought to find out the buying habits of housewives. A quantitative survey was sent out to a squad of volunteer housewives asking them one simple question. And that simple question was, where did you purchase your Christmas turkey from? So far, so good. The survey was quantitative, so the reply was limited to a one-word response. So if your answer was Sainsbury's or Walmart, then all you wrote on your sheet of paper was the word Sainsbury's or Walmart. The surveys were then sent back to the researchers who noted that the majority of the housewives had written the response Tesco's. For my American cousins, Tesco's is a budget supermarket here in Britain. Noting that the bulk of the responses said Tesco's, the researchers spoke amongst themselves and extrapolated that the reason why most the housewives had written Tesco's as their supermarket of choice was because they most certainly couldn't afford more upmarket supermarkets such as Waitrose's. Again for my American cousins, Waitrose's is an upmarket supermarket here in Britain. Now, did that make sense to you? If it did, then you, like many other non-whites, have been bamboozled by the great IQ test hoax. <laughs> to what I said earlier about the survey being filled out by those housewives denoting their turkey buying venues of choice. How could you have possibly concluded that the reason why most housewives purchased their turkeys from the budget supermarket Tesco's was because they couldn't afford the upmarket Waitrose's? Remember, only a one-worded response was given, so at best the reasons for that choice would be pure conjecture. And this, unfortunately, together with the fact that scientifically there's no biological credence to IQ tests, is why I'm vlogging today to put a bullet in the eye of this bullshit that delusional racists have been gaslighting non-white people with for decades. The lie being that based on IQ exams, blacks have been proven to be intellectually inferior. But before I said about debunking the lie that IQ tests aren't scientific or even proof of black intellectual capabilities, let's firstly look at the history of these timed IQ test tests, which are frankly nothing more than pimped up exams. They were first introduced over 100 years ago by a man called Binet, and in the 30s were later appropriated by the American government as a means to test their segregated army force of soldiers. So principally it was a test using marginalised black men as its sample poll. A test that was testing segregated black soldiers who had joined the army whilst living during an era where segregated schools and workplaces were legal. These same black so soldiers, I'll add, whom even after the war were still denied home loans and life advancement loans after they fought. These same black men were being tested alongside whites whom, regardless as to how poor they were, were beneficially living in an era where legally they still had more advantages. Just think about that for a moment because naturally this is relevant. The same IQ tests were then carried out again in the 1960s. Yes, the 60s, that magical era, which for some reason has been defined as the peace era, but where up to 6,000 blacks were legally lynched every year, where blacks couldn't legally drink from the same water fountain as whites, ride in the same part of the bus as whites, and a time when a law had to be passed for them to be allowed into better funded white schools. Getting the background now? When the results of these IQ tests came in, came in, the examiners asserted the retarded theory that the reason why some blacks, some blacks, were scoring lower was because of genetics. Did you hear that word, theory? And theories, as the racist Lana Loktoff has said once, are nothing more than guesses. Basically, IQ tests are nothing more than exams which have been strung together with unscientific theories. Theories which for the last hundred years have been based on a laughably small sample poll of marginalised black people from the 60s and the 30s. Now, the moment these unbalanced exam results were unveiled, equally unbalanced white men pounced onto them and skewed the results to match their racist narrative. One classic example of one such white person would be the doughy male by the name of Charles Murray, a eugenist. If you don't know what a eugenist is, it basically means a Nazi in possession of the delusion that he, he or she is superior to everyone else because of their white race. Furthermore, this mentally ill delusion is so strong that they seek to exterminate all other whites via the means of forced sterilisation and murders. For example, think of Marie Stopp, Cecil Rose, Hitler and the Holocaust. Anyway, Charles Murray, the white eugenist, became famous for gobbling up the IQ exam results and warping them to fit the narrative of a book he was writing called The Bell Curve a book that purported that IQ exams were scientific proof 
Ah, they misuse the word science so much, these people. That non-whites were intellectually inferior. And there you have it, a snapshot of IQ history and already a superb example of gaslighting from the dishonourable Charles Murray right there. Why? Because nowhere in these IQ exams or the history of IQ exams has there ever been a scientific link between racial genetics and IQ. But whites such as Charles Murray and his pack of collaborative dogs have continued to push this eugenics ideology through the medium of the warped IQ exams from the moment they've had a chance to. Essentially, this pack of hyenas have contributed towards gaslighting black people into kowtowing to this propagandist misnomer. And as well as you know, even present day racists have grabbed the Charles Murray baton and have been quick to straddle the dildo laden coattails of this IQ propaganda. White supremacists such as Gerard Taylor, a mummified white male whose greatest achievement was a qualification in philosophy. Yes, that's right, he's not a scientist, but nothing more than a qualified philosopher. Whatever a qualified philosopher means, because everyone is a philosopher. Gerald Taylor, the philosopher, has eagerly peddled the lie that there is a scientific link between race and intelligence. But if you listen closely to these alt-right apes, you'll detect the odious fume of gaslighting when they do so. For instance, I was watching Gerald Taylor's video on IQ and race where he cunningly says, <clears throat> There is a link. Is there a link between race and IQ? Well, you're asking the wrong question. Right there, that's his forked tongue worming its way through a rhetorical loophole. He knows that there isn't a scientific link between race and IQ, so he reframes and re-diverts the flaming question into another direction by saying smugly, well, you're asking the wrong question. <laughs> Sorry, I sound like Harry Grant. <laughs> anyway, forget that bad impression. What he means is that you're asking him the wrong question, which is wrong for him because he knows he has to give it a no. Imagine, if you came up to me and asked me if the sky was blue and I said you're asking me the wrong question, have I not just swerved the question into a different direction rather than answer you a yes or a no? This same Gerard Taylor, the white extremist's great white hope, then goes on to say with a straight face that bigger brains are linked to intelligence. But hang on, don't whales have bigger brains than humans? Fish. Seriously. This Jared Taylor is your great intellectual white hope. Fish. So now you have the history of IQs and the origins of its misappropriated use, and I'll reiterate this again. It was only ever unsubstantiated theories as to why black people did not score as highly as whites in these IQ tests. And that clearly, this guesswork had, or these theories had a cognitive bias with which white supremacists have been devouring ever since. Not once did the idiots surmise that it was the inferior living circumstances that the black soldiers were being subjected to in the 1930s in America that caused lower outcomes. No, that would be too convenient for a degenerate racist white society to, to accept. So iniquitously, the IQ exam moderators and subsequently racist uh, eugenists exclaims that it must be genetics. There was no data or evidence to even suggest this, but with baying moors they bleated it must be genetics. And the pure I claim that it was genetics is where I then, where I now use real science to smash this pathetic desperate piece claim to pieces even more. Because yes, you guessed it right, scientifically genetics had nothing to do with it either. And side note, if any white person says to you that intelligence is genetic, then they're telling you a desperate bald faced lie. And don't believe for one moment that their claims come from a qualified scientist. Literally, just a little basic research across government scientific websites and a book would have told you they were lying. The genetic section on the, the genetic sections on the National Library of Medicine website says in clear aerial font that there is no link between racial genetics and IQ. Because science has never even been able to detect whether there is such a thing as an intelligence gene and this fact is the headline for all scientific publications and journals everywhere rock up to any scientist and ask them for the name of the gene that creates intelligence and they would look at you as if you were a buffoon that's why new scientist magazine says that it's thought they might be an intelligent genes but we can't pin those genes down which is why professors such as Professor Daniel Poshfuma from the University of Amsterdam wrote in the journal nature's genetics that there is no scientific link between race and IQ. And this is why a real scientist would never claim that there was a link, because scientifically there is no evidence that alone data that proves that they would, that proves that. I mean, it would make you a laughing stock in the scientific community for saying so. Seriously, making that claim would literally be telling other scientists that you're not a qualified scientist.
In fact, because the existence of intelligence is still a mystery that can't be quantified save an environmental impact, it's only been recently that the scientific community have rolled up their sleeves and tried to locate genes that might have something to do with cognitive abilities. And this approach to the study was called the Genome-Wide Association Studies, um, genomes being the map of the human body essentially. This study sought to evaluate whether there were specific areas of our genome which could be associated with IQ. With me so far? To do this, the DNA contained within genomes was studied for genetic variants. Now, I haven't had to use scientific language for the longest time, well, not since my last job where I would essay quantitative data, so bear with me as I use non-layman descriptions. Basically, genetic variants are known as single, sorry, single nucleotide polymorphisms, or for short, SNPs. SNPs are called variants because they cause a change or a variation in the genetic sequence of DNA. To picture SNPs, imagine a DNA is a tube and lined inside of the tube are genetic sequences knitted together which SNPs can alter in structure. Okay? So far. SNPs are what can change the genetic outcome of DNA. So in order to determine if genes can be linked to intelligence, a biologist would examine DNA to see if there are any changes that SNPs have created. If a person has DNA that contains markedly different variances to the normal populace's DNA sequences, then you look at that what that SNP, that change that sequence contains and what it goes and what it does. For instance, if within your genome I find DNA that has SNPs, i.e. variants, which appear more in people with Alzheimer's than in people without Alzheimer's, then it's almost safe to say that that SNP, i.e. variant, in your DNA is a genetic indicator of someone most likely to eventually succumb to Alzheimer's. And if I find those same unique SNPs in your children, it means that your Alzheimer's is hereditary. With me so far? So the Medical Association commenced the genome-wide association studies to locate if so-called intelligent people shared the same types of SNPs not found in not-so-bright people because... In theory, it will only be the intelligent people who share the same types of variants, i.e. SNPs, that could possibly be the gene or rather DNA related to intelligence. However, these genome-wide studies have been plugging away for some time and have not yet conclusively identified variants, stroke SNPs, ultimately DNA, that underlie intelligence. I.e., there is nothing in the cognitive genome that shows DNA variants that create intelligence. Now, the press recently made a huge fanfare because um, reportedly out of 100,000 genes in the human body, a set of 52 genes have been finally located that might be the harbors of intelligence. And when I say might, what I mean is that these 52 genes have been linked to creating the synapses in the brain that send messages to and fro and for creating storage with which to put inside memory. However, Nothing is conclusive because in five years' time, for all we know, it could be discovered that these 52 genes create synapses but refrain from storing information, which is what you would need to be able to do in order for you to function as a human being whose brain could keep and retain information, i.e. intelligent thinking. Basically, these 52 genes could simply be the builders, not the fillers. An example would be that these 52 genes could build the house, i.e. the brain, but they don't fill the house with furniture or keep the furniture indoors, i.e. information. However, there is scientific links between environment and intelligence. Environment meaning nutritious food, pollution-free environment, a conducive family uh, dynamic, uh, environment meaning a calm and peaceful landscape, absence of police brutality, lynchings and white violence. So scientifically there is evidence and data which proves that great intelligence can come from living in a great environment. And this environmental evidence proves that whites aren't naturally intelligent, they just benefit from living in a white supremacist society unfettered by pervasive threats of white violence. In short, they benefit from an environment that favours them. Whites aren't naturally intelligent because if IQ tests were truly scientific studies, uh, scientific studies, the same tests would be performed in controlled environments as well as uncontrolled ones. And if the marginalised black soldiers being tested had lived in a controlled, better environment, then they would have excelled the whites. Therefore, a great environment is why wealthy families do well in IQ tests, which is why Africans score highly above everyone else in academic tests, which is why Nubians were the chief code breakers during the Second World War, which is why you have black doctors, black scientists, black inventors, and so forth. Because anyone can thrive intelligently if they're given the right environment. 
and which is also why the Chinese beat whites hands down in IQ tests because drum roll please because unlike black people trafficked into America and marginalized the Chinese haven't had their environment polluted by colonialism human traffic in the form of slavery legalized segregation or the ordeal of living under the pervasive threat of crime perpetuated by whites Basically, the same environments that black people who were tested for their IQ in the segregated 30s and 60s were being subjected to. Wow, those lucky Chinese. You see, is it all beginning to make sense? It's not genetic, but it is environmental. Anyway, this is one black British woman's voice kicking the shit out of the IQ lie. Leave your comments below. It's been a pleasure, and I'm out. Baby, come try it